Okay, so let's start by talking about the microanatomy of our nervous system. What does a neuron look like? What are its parts and pieces? What do um, neuroglial cells look like? What are their parts and pieces? So your um, nervous system is made up of primarily your brain, your spinal cord, and the nerves, okay? Brain and spinal cord are your central nervous system. Literally, they are located dead center in the middle of your body. So very easy to determine what that is. Anything else that is mentioned, if it is not brain and spinal cord, is automatically going to be peripheral nervous system. Remember, peripheral just means to the side, just like your peripheral vision means to the side. So you've got your nerves, okay? You also have the ganglia. So if you look, you can see that here, I've got these kind of little bulges of nerve. Instead of being smooth like a cord, like it is here or here, you've got these little um, swelled regions. These are actually where the cell body of a neuron is. So if you think back to our histology, um, chapter. When we looked at a motor neuron, we saw that big cell body and then that long, thin axon. Now imagine taking hundreds of those and braiding them together where all of the cell bodies are in one spot and those long, thin axons are in another spot. If you think about somebody with long hair, putting chongos in their hair, putting hair bands, okay, in their hair, all at the same level. If you braid their hair, right, and you get to that part where the chongos are, it's going to, it's going to um, bulge out. Well, nerves are not one neuron, one cell. There are a whole bunch of cells that have been braided together. So when you see a ganglia, that's basically the braided together neurons, and then you hit the cell bodies, and the cell bodies make it kind of bulge out like that. <clears throat> so you have the nerves, the nerves, the nerves, and the ganglia, as well as the brain and the spinal cord. Now remember, brain and spinal cord, always central nervous system. Anything else that I mention is going to be peripheral nervous system. It's going to be outside of that. So PNS means peripheral, CNS means central, okay? Now let's look at an actual neuron. This is kind of our classic neuron. Looks like a palm tree, a really weird palm tree, but it looks kind of like a palm tree with the big part at the top and then kind of the trunk coming off of it. So. This is a motor neuron, okay? It's got this big portion up here that is known as the neuron cell body. Also can be called the soma, S-O-M-A, okay? Up in the neuron cell body is where you are going to have your nucleus and your nucleolus. Now, out of everything that I expect you to spell correctly, these are the two words that I expect you to spell correctly because their spelling is so close to each other. If you don't spell them correctly, you are wrong. <laughs> other than that, I will be looking at everything that you're spelling to see if you're close enough. But these two words are either right or they are wrong, period, end of story, okay? Literally the only two words I expect you to spell correctly every single time, nucleus and nucleolus, okay? So, in the cell body, you have the nucleus and the nucleolus, okay? Nucleus is the big thing, nucleolus is the little thing. You also have these nissel bodies. Nissel bodies are actually going to be your rough endoplasmic reticulum that makes protein. But just like with the muscle having the sarcolemma and the sarcoplasm and all of that, we have to name it something different because, you know, it's a neuron and it isn't just a regular cell. Okay. We have the Golgi apparatus, kind of looks like a stack of pancakes. And we've got mitochondria, same kind of pinto bean shape with a squiggly in the middle. <clears throat> now, all of these short projections coming off of my neuron are called dendrites. Dendrite, I believe in Latin, means tree. 
okay? So if you look at this right there, where I'm cutting it off, it looks like a trunk with branches coming off of it, which makes sense to call it a tree. These are where incoming messages are going to come to this neuron. In other words, it's the receiving end of our neuron. Now, you'll notice that I do have one cell projection that is really long coming off of this cell. That projection is different than all of these little short projections. This one is called the axon, okay? The axon carries messages away from the cell body. So these are the receivers, the axon is the transmitter, okay? This little kind of ice cream cone shaped portion here is called the axon hillock. And then that first segment of the axon is called the initial segment, which think of the name, it makes sense. Now, the axon hillock in the initial segment, this area right here, is actually called the trigger zone because this is where we have the most receptors for responding to things like acetylcholine, the neurotransmitters. If you can get this part of your cell to fire, the cell is going to fire and you're going to get an action potential. If you don't, normally it's kind of iffy, but with the trigger zone, you hit that, it's going to trigger it to have an action potential. Now, that axon is the longest cell projection that we have here, the longest extension of that cell body. You will always know the axon, always, always, by the fact that it is the longest um, projection that we have. Now, if I take an up close look at a neuron on a slide, you're not going to be able to tell which of the projections is the axon. So in that case, everything's gonna be a dendrite. Why? Because you can't see which one's the longest one. But if I have a picture from far away, and you can see which one's the longest axon. That's the one, okay? So you've got this axon that is the longest. You kind of got a collateral, well, you do have a collateral axon that's branching off. And as you get to the end here, do you see these little patitas, these little feet down here? These are called the presynaptic terminals. You can also call them the axon terminals. Think of the word terminal for a second. What does terminal mean? Terminal means the end. So calling it an axon terminal actually makes sense because it's the end of the axon. Calling it a presynaptic terminal also makes sense because the space between the two cells, your neuron and the cell that it's touching, is called the synaptic cleft. So presynaptic means before that synaptic cleft. Now, these little lavender tamales that you see here, these are actually called Schwann cells. Okay, in this case, they are called Schwann cells. We're going to get into specifics of the others in a minute. But the Schwann cell is almost akin to an ACE bandage. So if you think about an ACE bandage, you sprain your ankle and you wrap it in an ACE bandage. What's the point of doing that? Physically, it supports that sprained limb, right? That's what we're hoping to accomplish by doing that, right? Well, think about this for a second. I am taking one single microscopic cell and I'm pulling it in all of these different directions. So imagine the thinnest spider web that you can imagine and then make it about a thousand times thinner. That's microscopic, okay? So you have this long projection coming off of a cell that is in your body, embedded in places in your body that you move and You've got muscles that are contracting and everything else. If you think about that for a second, that one little teeny tiny thousand times smaller than a spider web piece of cell is going to break. So what do we do? Well, we wrap it up. Okay. Imagine a cinnamon roll wrapping around a stick. Okay. So you've got the axon and you've got the Schwann cell that wraps around and wraps around and wraps around, basically physically supporting that axon so that it's basically a lot harder to break. Okay. Okay. So these are all the parts and pieces of our neuron. Okay. So taking a closer look at the Schwann cell, or 
we can also um, refer to this cell type as an oligodendrocyte. Now, what's the difference? The difference is that a Schwann cell will be found in the peripheral nervous system. So not the brain and the spinal cord, but everywhere else. If you're going to have this type of cell in the peripheral nervous system, it's going to be the Schwann cell. However, if you are going to have this same type of wrappy around cinnamon roll cell, you actually have it in the central nervous system, the brain, the spinal cord, then it is called an oligodendrocyte. Okay. So the oligodendrocyte is going to be specific to your central nervous system, brain, spinal cord. Now, why did I want to show you this? Because of this. So this Schwann cell that you're seeing looks like this. So here's my axon, that yellow band that's in the middle here. But this is actually the Schwann cell. And it is a cell. It's a cell that we've wrapped around my axon multiple, multiple times. Again, ace bandage. What I want you to notice is that I have really tight banding right here. And then all of the guts of my cell are along the outside. Okay. So the best way I can think to describe this is to describe toothpaste. So you know how you can get those little twisty things that help you to kind of get all of the toothpaste out of your tooth, um, toothpaste tube, right? Okay, so when you start twisting that key to get the toothpaste to kind of push forward, your hope in purchasing this item is that as you're rolling all of the guts of your toothpaste are getting pushed toward the top, meaning that on the actual roll itself, it's just toothpaste tube on top of toothpaste tube, right? When you have these oligodendrocytes and these Schwann cells wrapping like that, basically that's what you're doing. Instead of toothpaste tube on top of toothpaste tube, you've got cell membrane on top of cell membrane. So you have no guts of your cell in between creating this kind of lipid layer, um, this multiple lipid layer along that axon, the ACE bandage I was talking about. So if you look here, See how it's just cell membrane on top of cell membrane? That is going to be the toothpaste tube on top of the toothpaste tube. This area right here is actually called the myelin sheath, okay? And it really is very specific to a specific type of nerve matter, okay? When you've got the myelin sheath around your axons of your cells, we call it white matter. Okay, so when these are present, it's called white matter. And there is actually a color difference between axons that have these and axons that don't. And the axons without myelin sheaths, are called gray matter. Okay? So if you have white uh, if you have white matter, if you have a myelin sheath, it is white matter. If you don't have a myelin sheath, it's gray matter. In my brain, I always think of sheets. You know how they talk about, you know, sales where it's a linen sale or it's a white sale because they're selling sheets. So myelin sheath in my brain is white. Okay? Now, I want you to notice that in between the two Schwann cells here, there is just a little teeny tiny piece of axon that's being exposed. You can actually see the little path that is taken here to get to that little exposed portion of axon, okay? Those little expo exposed portions are called the node of Ranvier, okay? That's as French as that pronunciation is gonna get because I'm not French. But it's called the node of Ranvier and it does have quite a bit to do with how quickly um, a signal goes by in an axon, okay? You'd probably remember that from chapter 11 if you have me for lecture. All right, 
So let's talk about, maybe not because I need to erase the board, hang on. Let's talk about the different anatomical types of neurons. So this is what we just saw. This is called a multipolar neuron. So multi, multiple, many, right? Here's my cell body. I have many of these projections coming off of my cell body, multipolar, okay? Here, we've got a bipolar neuron. Cell body, two projections coming off, bipolar. Here, we've got a pseudo unipolar. Uni, one, right? So here's my cell body, here's that axon. You have one projection coming off of the cell. And here, we've got an axa, um, axonic, an ana, bleh, ana axonic, there we go, neuron, where you've got basically a cell body with dendrites coming off of it everywhere. So it's not really multipolar because you don't have that one axon, okay? You've got the cell body, you've got the dendrites, you've got the axon. You've got the cell body, one side is dendrite, one side is axon. You've got cell body, axon, the peripheral process of the axon, the central process of the axon, and the dendrites on one end. And then you in the um, anaxonic neuron, there we go, that's how you say that. You've got the cell body with the dendrites only, okay? So again, this is anatomical. Now looking at an actual slide of a neuron. Remember I said, if I'm up close, you can't tell me which one of these is going to be the axon. So if I point to any of the projections here, all of these projections are automatically, like knee-jerk reaction, automatically going to be dendrites. Here, however, you can see, here's the neuron, there's that one long projection coming off, right? All of these are short. So in this picture, you can tell that this is the axon, okay? So you've got the axon. Where it attaches to your cell body is the axon hillock. In the closer picture, you can see the cell body. You can see the dendrite, right? Out here, do you, whoops, there we go. Out here, see these nuclei that are out here? Okay, these are called glial cells. Now glial cells job is very different from a neuron's job. Neuron's job is to carry signal from point A to point B, almost like a phone line. It carries a signal from here to there. Glial cells jobs, are to take care of neurons. That is their function. That's what they're there to do. So you've got these nuclei around this cell and they are glial cells. You have the nucleus and you can see the nucleus, big old beach ball right there. See that dark spot dead center in the middle of the beach ball though? That is the nucleolus. Again, these are the only two words that I will ever expect you to spell correctly every single time that you use them. Now, the neuron model. This is kind of the older neuron model that we have, but you can see the cell body. See these little feet right here, these little patitas? These are the axon terminals. I'm gonna go back, you don't worry about going back. I'm just gonna go back to show you something. Remember these little patitas down here? at the base here that I said were presynaptic terminals or axon terminals, right? Well, they touch other neurons. So you've got those little patitas touching this neuron. So these are from the cell previous to this cell that we're looking at. Here are the short projections. These would be the dendrites. Here's the axon, that long projection coming off of it, right? You can see the mitochondria, see the little beans here? You can see the Schwann cells. You can even see the myelin sheath here, okay? With it wrapping around and around and around. Now remember, these Schwann cells are cells, so they actually have their own nuclei. 
This is the axon. This is that myelin sheath with the guts of our um, with the guts of our Schwann cell taken away. This little area right here where I've got one Schwann cell and another Schwann cell, this would be the node of Ranvier. This would be that little naked spot that we saw in the previous picture. And here's that endoneurium. So with our nervous system, with our cells, just like with our muscles that had those connective tissue layers, the endomecium, the perimecium, the um, brain fart mecium, <laughs> epimecium, there we go. You have those same types of layers in your neurons. Well, in your neurons, in your nerves. So each individual neuron, each individual cell with their Schwann cells is covered by a connective tissue layer. That in this case is going to be the endoneurium. Now, just like with our muscle cell, they had specific names for things. Inside of our axon, the gooey that is normally the cytoplasm is now called the axoplasm. Why? Because scientists have to be complicated about everything and name everything something different just to make it that much more complicated. But it is called the axoplasm. So yes, you do have to know it. Okay, so opening the cell body, you can see the nucleus and the nucleolus. See all of these little blue spots here? These are the nissel bodies. The nissel bodies that are the rough endoplasmic reticulum. Now, the membrane of our axon is called the axolemma, just like the membrane of our muscle cell was called the sarcolemma, okay? It's still technically the cell membrane, but it doesn't matter because scientists have to be complicated and name everything something different. So looking at the opposite side, here's my nucleus, here's my nucleolus. See all of these fibers. These are actually called neurofibrils, okay? Now, why are they called neurofibrils? Well, because they are part of the cytoskeleton that helps our neuron, sorry, to maintain their shape. Remember, our neurons have to stretch over distances so that they can carry signal from point A to point B. That means they have to maintain that shape, just like we maintain our shape with our internal um, skeleton, they have the cytoskeleton. And in this case, the neurofibrils are part of that cytoskeleton that helps the neuron to maintain its shape. Okay, so I'm gonna stop there for right now, um, since this is already 22, well, 23 minutes.